It is time for a Silver League Protoss versus Terra. Now, what I got for you today is a match plate on Honor Grounds LE. Spawning in the top right corner, a player who's sending out an SCV awfully early on into this match, as well as a second one, apparently. We have none other than the blue Terran player known as Palpa. He's sending these really early on. I'm not entirely sure what that is all about. And his opponent spawning all the way on the other end of the map, playing with the red Protoss pieces. He is known as Omega Odin. He's both... The very, yeah, the very ending, as well as apparently one of the main gods from Norse mythology. I'm not entirely sure what that is all about either, but what are these SCVs looking for? He is for, I guess for his sake, very early with the scout right here. So he'll be able to, he'll be able to figure out exactly what is going on on the other end of the map. SCV, of course, in the bottom right corner will not be able to find anything. But here he does indeed figure out very early on that his opponent went for a super early... Um, you know, barrack or a very early gateway rather. So, you know, if he's gonna follow this up with any barracks, this is gonna be very tricky already. He's not gonna be able to do a whole lot. Once again, swooping back around. And he's actually oh no 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 not again. He's saving up minerals for a command center, isn't he? No 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 not again, not again. Oh. <laughs> We do indeed have it once more, as you may uh, remember, the very first replay that I ever casted of a uh, fewer submitted game, just like this one right here, was a Planetary Fortress Rush, and that game was one of the craziest Terran matches that I've ever seen, and I wouldn't be surprised if he- yeah, dude, look at that. We once again have something very similar among us, like, I think he's gonna have to follow this up reasonably soon here as well, though, with an engineering bay, at the very least, to be able to morph this thing in, but regardless, the command center is already being built. The Protoss is looking to go for a quick expansion, doing a very solid build order, everything considered. Uh, because, of course, this is a Silver League match. But regardless, the SCV that was initially scouting out apparently has found a nice little bench uh, to look at. I guess he could potentially sit down there. But the command center will finish up really early on into the game. And Omega Odin has decided to basically cut out the very first Zealot and go for the Warp Gate upgrade here initially. And then, as well, a Stalker. And very shortly afterwards, I'm assuming... Assuming here a mothership core as well once he can indeed afford that but regardless we do see so much stuff and look at that the engineering bay is almost done we once again have got a planetary fortress rush there's no way there's a proxy command center going down how would this ever work out though he's sending more scvs he's sending more scvs so i'm assuming he's gonna lift up the command center exactly like he's doing right here land it inside of his opponent's main base in range of the command center and then repair it with the SCVs. At the very least, that's what I'm assuming here. Because what otherwise would you go for? There is a Stalker out, however. So, of course, that could do a lot of damage. There's also a Mothership Core that can also do a lot of damage. But regardless, the SCVs have indeed arrived. The Command Center is going to be able to land. Probes are pulled off the line, though. That is the correct response right here. But the Planetary is being morphed in. Now, you need the Mothership Core. Set that Photon Overcharge to work, sir. There's a pylon right there. You just build it. That's going to be able to shut down so much of this aggression already. Because I'm not... If I'm not mistaken here that planetary no that planetary will most definitely finish up look at this the planetary fortress will be able to finish up in the main base of the terran or of the protoss opponent rather and while this is of course a pretty much 100 percent all in Pulpa will be able to start doing a very substantial amount of damage with it as well, because that planetary is finishing up in just a few seconds. Mothership Core is still chasing around, not realizing, I guess, that the uh, planetary fortress can indeed not shoot up. But there we go, it starts firing, and it's going to be able uh, to start... There we go, finally it gets it, but that, that pylon will be shut down immediately. I mean, it will get a couple of shots out, which will, you know, all be fine and dandy, I suppose. But this SCV here will be able to start repairing, but apparently, first off... He's gonna start building a missile turret. Now, finally, the Protoss player does realize that indeed the Mothership Core uh, will be able to shoot from the skies. He still does have enough energy here to go for a second Photon Overcharge, which I think actually is going to be the correct decision. But regardless, uh, the SCVs are desperately trying to build whatever they can, and apparently a single missile turret is all that she wrote at the very least for the time being. More and more gas still being mined. There's not a whole lot of use for it. He's actually building another planetary fortress at home as well, just to try and keep this thing alive for a little while longer. Um, I'm not entirely sure what exactly we should expect out of this game right now, right? Sure, the planetary is dealing a bunch of damage. Sure, it will be able to start taking out whatever there is, but... Is it going to, like, die? And I, I think, actually, considering the Mothership Core, we'll be able to shoot from the skies, right? 
he's gonna be able to do a very substantial amount of damage. I mean, there's no Stargate follow-up, there's no real uh, response here from the Protoss player whatsoever, other than a super quick third command center as well. But once again, with the extended range right there being researched in the engineering bay, um, this planetary may very well be able to kill that Nexus, in particular once it finishes up that research, because there is a lot of potential here for damage, because basically this adds another little bit of range uh, to all of the missile turrets, as well as the planetary fortress itself, which is very, very nice for it. Eventually, though, we do finally see the barracks follow up now, too, but still, I think the Protoss player has never played against a strategy like this before. Not move the Mothership! Move the Mothership, please! Okay, no, 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 no. Oh my god. Well, hey, at least lucky for the Protoss, or for the, yeah, for the Protoss, uh, apparently it turns out that the planetary is indeed uh, not in range right now of the Nexus. I wonder, though, what will happen once this upgrade finishes up, which is in just a split second from now. Will it be in range then? Come on, it's finishing up. Yep, it is. Oh my god, it's a perfectly executed planetary fortress rush, though. Everything considered, I mean, I would like to imagine that even though Pulp is in Silver League, he may have executed this a hundred times before, because that was the perfect execution. I did not expect that to be perfectly in range right there. Uh, maybe he actually figured out that, you know, he needs to place down the planetary right here, uh, right at the perfect amount of time. But apparently Protoss, however, has not played against this style before, because he's most definitely going to have to give up his main uh, nexus in just a little bit. But if he would have just started up, you know, for example, a Stargate and maybe a Void Ray or something along those lines, he would be able to simply get rid of this planetary very, very easily. Now, of course, though, even like even losing this Nexus may not necessarily be the end of things just yet. You got to keep in mind that there is still quite a lot of mining going on here for the Protoss. He's still adding on more gateways. <laughs> I guess Omega Odin had a strategy in mind when he started up this match, and he's sticking to his gut. He's, he's making sure that he continues onwards with that exact move as well. Now, there's quite a lot of Stalkers out now. Uh, the Stalkers should be able to get rid of these SCVs very, very nicely. But regardless... This game is not looking terrible for the Protoss here, everything considered. I think it could have shut down this Planetary Fortress Harass, which I guess is what we can call it, uh, reasonably easily if he would have been able to, uh, you know, get that, uh, get that Stargate out just a little bit faster. But he's just producing more and more gateways. He's going to be able to start up another Nexus as well on the fourth base location. And while apparently he will have a lot of trouble leaving his natural behind, he will be able to start doing a very solid amount of damage as well once all of the gateways do finish up and once he starts warping in a lot more. Because all things considered, he's still got two bases pretty much fully saturated. He's got three gateways right here, a fourth gateway right there. He's going to need about uh, another four or so if he wants to properly start using this. But I think Protoss has been thrown off of his play just a little while. Whereas Palpa may be behind right now as far as his supply counts go. At the very least, he is getting himself another command center as well. He's trying his very best to tech up here too. So he must feel pretty solid uh, about his result. But I wonder though, if Protoss just moves across the map right now, right? Isn't that just simply not gonna be enough here to defend for the Terran player? I mean, sure, the Planetary Fortress may not just yet fall, right? But still, this is gonna be a very, very tricky follow-up. Now, Omega Odin still um, decided that apparently he's gonna stick to this gateway-based style. I feel like he's got himself so much economy here to start building, for example, uh, you know, a, a Stargate, like I already said, but even like a robotic facility would be a great addition now too, because of course, units like the immortal units like the void ray and whatnot do so much damage to armored buildings and, and units in particular that i feel like that would be a subliminal choice regardless though there's a lot a lot of mining going on for omega odin has he even figured out no i was gonna say has he even figured out that his opponent spawned in the top right corner of the map it looks like he hasn't even found out about that part just yet so i think his plan is to simply just sit back wait for his opponent to move out and then eventually overrun it or maybe just maybe he's sitting back here to try and get himself some solid upgrades and then move across the map once those finish up. There's no blink in the production tab just yet. There is another planetary fortress, of course, because, hey, what's a game without a planetary fortress or 16? You need at least a whole couple of those, but this actually could become rather tricky here, because once Popa gets more siege tanks out, right, the sheer amount of units there that the Protoss is going for is just simply not going to be enough. I mean, sometimes you can simply overrun your opponent, right? But with SCVs repairing a command center that is a planetary fortress, and then also, you know, siege tanks in the back, that is not something you can easily break with Stalkers alone, and I'm a little worried that he just simply does not have enough stuff spent right now. 
He is getting himself a very large economy now, though. Eventually adding on more and more gates here too, but no tech just yet. Apparently, he is getting himself plus one, plus one, as well as the blink research right now. So just simply mass, mass stalker play here from the Protoss player. And I mean, I'm just worried. If he sits back for too long, Palpa would just have too many units. Look at that. He's perfectly countering it, right? Every single sit that he's getting himself all of the right necessities here. He's got himself a Banshee that he's not quite harassing with just yet, but he's getting the personal cloaking field as well. But more importantly, he's getting himself Marauders, he's getting himself Stimpak, he's got a bunch of Siege Tank out already. This could easily still go back into Papa's favor if Protoss decides to move out and simply overextend. Now eventually, finally, we do see that tech of choice here. Omega Odin has decided that he wants to go ahead and build a few Stargates here too, because the Stargates will be able to do a very nice amount of damage. Now, Banshee Cloaking has finished up. Banshee not dealing any damage just yet, sadly. He was apparently waiting for the second one. But of course, with these Cloaking Field done right, there is zero detection for the Protoss player out right now. I highly doubt that he's planning on getting Oracles for detection here either. So this could actually be kind of scary for him because there's a lot of army, um, you know, or, or not a whole lot of army actually for the Terran, I'll take that back. But there's a lot of army here uh, that he cannot quite easily shoot at. Double Void Rays are being produced, so indeed he did not plan to go for any Oracle play, instead he's just simply gonna try and sit back. Palpa did attack move with the units, but oh my god, these Marauders will get absolutely shredded. But not without taking out a few Stalkers at the very least, um, while doing so as well. Activate the Cloaking! Activate the Cloaking! You research Cloaking, Terran! <gasps> This is bad for my heart. Sometimes these games are really bad for my for my sanity. But there we do indeed finally see some worker harass here. I feel like the workers, though, are not really what are making the decision in this game. Because while the economy is most definitely in favor of Protoss, Terran is not doing a whole lot to try and catch back up into that scenario. Omega Odin still adding on more and more here. He's trying his very best to eventually get himself a robotic facility and with that an observer as well, which in my opinion is one of those buildings that you need 100% of the time uh, when you are playing, uh, this is so cute though, when you are playing the Protoss player, but I always love this, whenever this sort of aggression is going on, um, you know, in, in particular in like the lower leagues, right, whenever like one player is really focused on microing that Banshee and then also the other player trying really hard to prevent himself from losing a lot of economy, the minerals and the gas just start piling on, both players just simply, uh, you know, had over a thousand resources right there for a little while, which is just such a typical move for like lower league play, it's so cool to see. Anyway, uh, we do eventually do see that fleet beacon go down too. So Omega Odin has decided that apparently he still does not quite want to move out. He's still not feeling confident enough. First off, he's getting himself an observer. Secondly, he's getting himself the plus two, plus two upgrades here as well. So we'll be able to start mining those or getting those. And eventually he's also getting himself the armor research here for all of the void race. Because I don't think he's actually shown himself with the void race just yet. There we go. Oof, once again, we do see that... Um, cloaking field being activated in the nick of time. There is indeed an observer here somewhere. Not entirely sure where it's currently located. There it is, and I think this, this Banshee will not be able to get on out of here to tell the tale, and eventually there we... Do. Yep, no, it will get shut down. But without, uh, without, not without, like, doing a very nice amount of damage. Now, at the same time, we see a fusion core. Are you kidding me, Palfa? You go for the planetary fortress rush into planetary in the main, into battle cruisers? Is that your plan right here? Please tell me it works. It shouldn't be working. I mean, that planetary is still up, by the way, in the main base as well. He's still producing SCVs out of that, because I guess he got that on the same hotkey as his other command centers. But regardless, please tell me this is going to work out. There's no way, right? There's already so many buildings and so many bases up here for the Protoss player, but he's not doing anything with it. We do see the Hyperflight Rotors being researched now, too, uh, which is indeed the speed research for the Banshees. Uh, so maybe he's gonna try and do something with that. I was a little disappointed though, because I mean, you got that fusion core. You gotta build me a. You know, when you get this thing, at least build me a, a either a liberator range upgrade or the you know or a battle cruiser. Those are your best options right there. Protoss though is still not quite done. He's apparently gonna kind of rush his way out of this. Are you kidding me? Is he not just simply gonna use the void rays here? You can't just nuke these things down, right? You do know about the prismatic alignment, right? You do know that planetaries don't shoot up, right? But hey. Apparently to each their own. Banshees are indeed still being produced, right? And I mean, Terran, Terran has not got, even got like half the army supply of his opponent, but the units that he does have, or that he, yeah, the, the units that he does have right now are going to be rather good. Omega Odin, of course, simply just sitting back here, trying his very best to LOL his opponent to make sure that apparently he still does not feel comfortable enough to move out. But he just simply got so many units. What if he just... 
decides to move across the map here in just a little bit. Look at that. He finally is starting to move a little bit. He's not quite, you know, found his opponent's base just yet. He still has no idea that his opponent spawned pretty much right next to where the Stalkers are currently located. I mean, look at that. We can show him in the same screen very, very easily. But still, fighting into a planetary fortress, a bunch of marauders and a bunch of siege tanks like that, um, I don't think that's going to work out all too well for him. Now, of course, Hyperflight Rotors, I believe, is what this research is called, or will be finishing up in just a few seconds. The main base will be mined out here as well for Pulpa very, very shortly. He's got to make a move for it, right? If he wants to do anything in his match, he's got to go ahead and make a move for it. Now, apparently, Banshees still out here. Now, the idea, of course, behind Banshees, generally speaking, is to do some sort of harass. Um, apparently, though, eventually... Oh, come on, you don't need the cannons. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need the cannons, man. You got... No, you don't build a siege tank there either. Are you kidding me? Look at the amount of void rays you got. There we go. He finally decides to move onwards. There you go. Prismatic alignment. Beam down those things. Could have micro that one weakened one back. And apparently after Papa lost his very first command center that he moved into a planetary fortress, he figured that that was going to be enough. And without the Protoss ever moving across the map or even scouting out where his opponent spawned, he ended up obtaining the victory. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this game. If you did, make sure you hit that like button down below. And if you want to see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get a notification as soon as I upload more. While you're at it, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Links are in the description. I want to thank you for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile alright. And I will see you in the next one.